be me, DM running a two-party version of Red Hand of Doom in 5e, which I have discussed several times before on Reddit, set in the Wadi Khanate, known to the rest of Ferran as the Chamath Vale. Very heavy medieval Levant Persia theme, Party 1, the Wyvern Wagoneers, runs on Saturday they're called the Wyvern Wagoneers because they ride in a wagon and their first act as a unified adventuring party was killing a Wyvern party consists of, Ramos, Orc Cleric of Thoth, the Mulharandi God of Knowledge, Writing and Truth. The Mulharandi are literally Egyptians stolen from Earth and brought to Faron. He is the owner of the titular wagon, Simeon, half-elf monk, Kensi, who is apparently a traveling ascetic devotee of Tip, pronounced Tyre in this part of the world. He's actually a member of the Sacred Fists of Tip, a bunch of white-robed fanatics who are definitely not the assassins from Assassin's Creed. Hey, just between you and me, they are totally the assassins from Assassin's Creed. Calvin, a totally normal human who is a regular ordinary guileless and assuming everyone engaged in completely respectable important moderate employment. He's definitely a cool, original, nice, magnanimous, awesome nerd. Iron, an old bard. 5e made Nolz really boring so one of the players in the other group wrote up a homebrew ruler set for PC Nolz. And one of this group's players liked it so much he decided to make a character of their own. From his own tribe, he learned to sing and play the drums. From the humans, he learned to play the bagpipes, which he brings own exclusively to annoy people has literally killed things with vicious mockery, and seems to enjoy doing so, doesn't understand why people get freaked out about the idea of him eating corpses. Grim, a dwarf warlock. For the past 12 generations of his family, the firstborn son has always been born on the same day of the year, lived for exactly the same amount of time and then died in mysterious circumstances. Grim is working for a Ugolith called Cathexis in return for a way to break this curse. Cathexis communicates with Grimm entirely via automatic writing in his Book of Shadows, which never runs out of pages. Be in Red Rock, major mining town at the eastern end of the valley. Red Rock has two major ethnic minorities. A contingent of gold dwarfs assembled mostly around four major clans. Clan Torigrim, Eversal, Clan Dorjan, Redstone, Clan Audrim, Hammerfist, and Clan Warren, Ironborn. A large Yorkish ethnic group known as the people who follow the Mulharandi, Egyptian, religion the party has been sent by the Sheikh of Rethma to work out why the mines have stopped producing iron and stone. When they arrived, there was a full blown riot about to take place between the orcs and the dwarfs, who have had ethnic tensions for as long as anyone can remember. Both the dwarf and the orc community leaders had been murdered, and now the two newly selected ones were throwing insults at each other. The dwarf community leader Kilwin Dorjan, a cleric of Moradin, seemed somewhat shifty. After a lot of investigation, and killing Ankhags in the mine, they discovered that she was being impersonated by a shapeshifter, and the original was still down in the mines, trapped behind a cave-in. Begin yesterday's session. We've got to work out how to expose the shapeshifter and convince the orcs and the dwarfs that someone is trying to sabotage the town from the outside. Grim consults with his patron and discovers that, from what information they've gathered, the shapeshifter is a female aranya, and powdered alchemical silver delivered to the mucous membranes can seriously hurt her. They decide to stage another riot between the dwarfs and the orcs, so they enlist the help of the orcish community leader, who has seen the real Kilwin Dorjan and agreed to help. He puts the real Kilwin Dorjan in a barrel and wheels her in a handcart to the market square where the riot is brewing, and begins carefully holding back his people. The fake Kilwin Dorjan shows up, and begins throwing horrific racial abuse at the orcs at the appointed signal. The real Kilwin Dorjan pops up out of the barrel, and declares may Moradin curse you. Imposter Simeon nails his acrobatics check and Altair dives off the roof of a nearby building to cut off the spider's escape route. Grim uses prestidigitation to ensure that the powdered silver gets into the fake Kilwin's eyes no. No. Curse your stinking, rotting bones where Kilwin Dorjan stood moments ago, there's now a horrible bloated orb weaver spider the size of a draft horse, with 8 disturbingly human eyes, to the size of tennis balls. Underneath her body are 2 additional limbs which appear to end in sickening spidery hands with thick, black urticating hairs. Can you all roll me some initiative? 
please Aaron gets 22 initiative and casts vicious mockery. Whoa. No wonder we couldn't find any webs. You look like you're too fat to sit in them save DC 15. Rolls 2. 7 damage. Horrible shapper shifting spider dislike that. Horrible shapper shifting spider looks at all the townsfolk and the adventurers ready to fight her and tries to book it. Simeon grapples as a reaction. Yup, she ain't going anywhere. The other party members decide to show her their stabs. Iren casts vicious mockery again. No wonder you shapper shift when you're this fucking ugly save DC 15. Rolls a natural one. Me. Fuck it. You know what. Roll damage on vicious mockery as if you crit rolls fucking max damage. Well fuck me. They all stab the spider into unconsciousness. Welp. Visit her later in her cell, where it has assumed the form of a half-elf woman from the north, and is being guarded by six extremely freaked out guards, who had to drag her in there while she was still a monstrous spider. Attempt to use Zone of Truth and Suggestion to interrogate it. Zone of Truth works, but Suggestion doesn't. Simeon, being a fanatical devotee of Tip, is like she absolutely has to die. I pronounce sentence everyone else is like sure but we can interrogate her first. Right Simeon is like sure whatever, defo going to kill her though okay she continues to be pretty tight lipped, taunting them with how much she knows. Ramus, I am uncomfortable with her ability to just turn into a tiny spider and crawl out of the window of herself. The rest of the party, hum, yeah, that's a problem Ramus. Are you right handed or left handed amused by the question? She answers that she's left handed. Ramus player, arcana check. Do shapeshifters who don't have regenerative healing regain limbs and other forms oh no. Firstly, I know where this is going. Secondly, I legit don't know the answer. We work out that no, they probably don't. Ramus, cool brb returns with healer's kit and a hatchet. Rolls a natural 20 on his intimidation check. SP8 Dirtle starts immediately spilling everything she knows. Ramus. Cool Ramus makes it clear he's going to cut off everything other than her left hand anyway so she can't transform into something tiny and escape. She tries to transform and attack Ramus. Ramus. Sacred Flame Ramus. Spare the dying Ramus. I can literally do this all night Ramus player she's unconscious right now. Right me. Yes Ramus. Hatchet noises. Calvin. Do WTF. Leaves. Grim. Leaves. Simeon. Leaves in lawful good. Welp. Ramus walks outside carrying a large bundle of spider legs. Iron. Yo dude can I eat one of those Ramus? What no that's fucked up. I'm not comfortable with that Iron. Pick related. Later. At the tavern. Calvin. Drinks heavily. Calvin. F this shit Calvin goes to the guardhouse. Bluffs his way inside the cell. Calvin. Yo here's the fantasy equivalent of a morphine overdose horrible shapper shifting spider person. Yeet. Drinks. Calvin returns to his room at the inn. Two hours later. Knock at the door. It's the captain of the guard. Captain of the guard. Hey bitch did you kill our prisoner Calvin? No she died of having no legs captain of the guard. I know what dying of blood loss looks like and I know what dying of a milk of the poppy overdose looks like and they are not the same Calvin. Fair point as it turns out. However, the captain of the guard isn't really all that cut up about the awful shapper shifting spider monster being dead, and Calvin is under contract to assist the town, so locking him up would be counterproductive. Captain of the guard, if you ever kill anyone in my town again, I will hang you myself, Calvin. Believe it or not, that is literally the most reasonable thing I have heard related to justice today, captain of the guard, pick related captain of the guard, leaves in lawful good. Welp, to be clear I have absolutely no problem at all with how this session turned out, all my players had fun and so did I. But seriously. We went from resolving a democratic dispute between pixies a few sessions ago to if we cut off all the spider's legs she's still a useful intelligence asset. I don't know about you guys, but I'm more of a fan of the diplomacy route. I kind of like to work with it a wee bit more and seeing what I can and can't get out of possibilities you know and um, i feel like just straight up killing them or virtually them 
can lead to, you know, you're just kind of killing off that entire potential of a storyline, in my mind. But, like, you know, now's not the place for what's more effective, the fucking the pen of the sword, you know what I mean? Um, there's good arguments for both sides, and, you know, what really matters is these boys had fun, you know, and being honest with you, Bitchkin, uh, Spider Shapeshifter, sounds like a lot of fun to me. It does sound like a good session, so what might not be my personal taste does not mean it's the bad option at all you know but like let us know what you thought down below this was getting very differently there was a lot more like numbers and rolling involved which normally we don't really see in the stories that i like to do but like it was getting a bit differently and um, a lot more actual like you know characters talking and all that jazz but like hope you boys enjoyed i really liked it and uh, i'll see you in the next video check out my ebay store links below i sell 3d printed miniatures